patellofemoral joint. Um, you know, superior glides, inferior glides, medial glides, um, lateral glides. Probably the one I don't routinely do are lateral glides. Um, that's the position of instability for the patella. If anyone's going to dislocate it, it'll be lateral. Um, but, but definitely assessing medial glides, inferior glides, superior glides. When it comes to intervention techniques, just make sure that the, the, um, the femoral condyles should be level with the ground, so that way the patella is, is level as well, okay? Um, in grades of movement, and I'll, I'll just show you guys that the patella here right now is, I have, and we'll do an inferior glide, okay? So what the first thing I need to do is find the end range of movement, and so for her, this is her end range of movement. So if I'm doing Maitland grade ones, okay, um, or Kaltenborn even grade ones, it's gonna be a very small amplitude of movement within just the very beginning range of motion. So um, I am gliding her her patella inferiorly, but I'm not going anywhere near the physiologic end range. I am stimulating mechanoreceptors. I am getting patellofemoral joint gliding in this position. If the person's having a lot of anterior knee pain, this may help feel a little bit better for them and start. they'll start to relax their muscles a little bit more and might be able to reduce their pain, um, promote synovial fluid, circulation, all those things we just talked about, okay? A grade two is just a little bit further into the range of motion, but never hitting the barrier, never hitting the end range. So again, I always need to kind of assess, okay, that's where the end is. So now when I'm doing this, it's gonna be a larger amplitude of movement, but I don't take her all the way to the end range, okay? And if anyone's looking, you know, I'm just using my hand here to kind of assess how much movement I'm getting, but the whole mobilization is happening with this hand. So more of a grade two movement. A grade three movement now is I'm going to engage the barrier every time, back off quite a bit, and then hit it again. So on and off, on and off, on and off. So again, I'm going to find where the end range of movement, and then I'll come off of it and hit it. Come off of it and hit it. Come off of it and hit it. Yo, clicking with the phone. <laughs> so the part of she's clicking, that one of the things I would do as a therapist if I'm feeling a lot of clicking, I might just see about rotating the, the femur a little bit differently. It just now she's not clicking in there. So, you know, sometimes just. You know where you want to be and where you should be, but then you're in practice, you almost have to make those minor adjustments. So that's a grade three. I go into the end range, come off of it, and hit it again, but it's a very large amplitude. The final grade four is I'm going to take it into the end range, only back off a little, and it immediately hit it again. So it becomes a much smaller amplitude of movement. But theoretically, I'm spending more time at the end range because I'm hitting it more often, right? So over, over a few, you know, over a minute or two. So I'm going to go into the end range, come off just a little, and now I'm just going to keep. So those are your maintenance grades, and that's what it feels like. So now she's going to go around and tell you guys all what that felt like to her, right? Do you have any recommendations as far as when to do the sustained stretch and the oscillating stretch? I, I always do the sustained stretch. That's the way we were taught in residency, and the, there, there's research out there supporting that's the more optimal way of doing it. So now if I'm going to do a Calton born, right, grade ones and two, Again, any, if I'm not hitting the end range or if I'm not even taking it to the end, end range and holding it there in the plastic, um, in, into that plastic deformity, all I'm doing is all of the things I talked about as far as stimulating mechanoreceptors, um, synovial fluid circulation, I'm getting all those benefits with that. What I'm just not getting is the joint capsule stretch, which if the, if the joint motion was, was normal or, or maybe it was hypomobile, but I didn't believe it was the joint capsule, it was muscle tightness, I might, I'm not going to want to stretch the capsule. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to do joint oscillatory techniques and joint, you know, I, I start, a mobilization to me is to stretch and then you have your oscillations, which are, I'm, I'm moving it within the physiologic range, but I'm not stretching the capsule. And that's how I clearly define the difference in my head. Um, you're going to see a lot of people interchange a lot of those terms out there, so you've got to be very clear about what they're discussing. So a Kaltenborn grade three is not only do I find the end range, and with the, Mount, the Kaltenborn, with the maintenance, I was taking it to the end range and backing right off of it. With the counting boards, not only do I find the end range, but now I move you into the plastic range of movement, and I'm holding it there for 10 to 15 seconds. If I don't hold it there for any amount of length of time, you're, all, you're still not stretching the joint capsule because, yes, you've taken it into the plastic range, but you haven't held it there long enough to break down any of the collagen cross-links and to start lengthening that tissue out, okay? So when you're practicing these, you don't want to be there and sit there, okay, let me sit here for really 30 seconds because you may be creating some joint hypermobilities out there, so be careful with that. Okay. You do the same thing for medial glides, you can do the same thing for superior glides at the knee. Okay. For the most part, patella glides, I mean, as soon as they're gliding well in extension, that's, that's all done. The only other glide I've ever done for the knee 
cap, and this is one I invented myself, so you're not going to find this in any uh, textbook <laughs> anywhere. I'll tell you that. Um, sometimes when I'm dealing with individuals with knee replacements, and I really feel like the, it's the patellofemoral joint, I can start to flex up the knee some. This only works, and I find it only really works up to a certain amount of knee flexion. By the time you hit 90 degrees, this really doesn't work anymore. And the reason why is the patella is moving into that closed pack position, and it is sitting deeper and deeper into the femoral condyles. So you're not going to be able to get as much movement, as well as you put more and more stretch of the vastus, um, the vasti muscles on, on the um, on the patella. So it's just not going to move as much. But I can do a lot of times. I'll do like an inferior glide. So now now that I've flex the knee up, my, what's my joint plane? Is it the femur or is it the patella and the patellofemoral joint? What is the joint plane in the patellofemoral joint? Is it the patella or the femur? Okay, so what, how, how do we define the joint plane in any femur. joint in the body? This is something we definitely want to get. It's the concave surface. That, so in the patellofemoral joint, I'm basically asking which one's the concave surface. Oh. It's the patella. So the joint plane is the patella. So I need to always know what angle that patella is at. As I flex her more and more, that joint angle changes. So so does the the angle of which I'm mobilizing it change. Okay. So when she's in a bit of flexion, it's no longer straight down towards the table. The joint plane has changed. Her, her patella is sitting more this way. So now my mobilization force needs to be in this direction. Does that make sense? That's something you always, always have to think about when you're doing mobilizations, especially as you're taking it out of the open pack position. The joint plane can very well change with that new position. You have to be cognizantly aware of that. So what you're going to feel here is that I can, if I want to do inferior glides again, and I will get, you know, I'm, I'm having my palping fingers. I can get an inferior glide, and that's definitely an easy. So sometimes I'll do an inferior glide, stretching that position there. But I've actually never seen that in a textbook, and I just started... I was having a person who was having a really hard time with flexion. I was doing anything and everything I could come think in my head. You know, just sticking to those principles of joint plane, mo amount of motion. So. You're just doing a inferior glide yeah, of the patella. That's the La Rosa technique. That's the La Rosa technique. Enough. I hope they print that in a book. <laughs> okay. Tibial femoral joint, if it's knee flexion, again, we mentioned about, okay, that's the end range. I might just want to back off just a little bit, place the leg down. And the tibial femoral joint, what is the joint plane? The tibia is the concave surface, right? So now I have to be cognizantly aware of what angle that tibia is in, because if she's in more degrees of extension, the plane is more down, but as I flex her up more and more, it's becoming more posterior. So you have to be very cognizant. You have to find that joint line. And once you have that, then you can just get your forearm in the exact same line, and you can perform, if it's a posterior glide, this way, okay? Grade one, two, threes, you know, if it's a cotton board grade three, I find where the end range of the movement is and then I move into the plastic range and hold it there, okay? But if I'm just doing joint oscillatory techniques, it might be much lower amplitude and force, okay? All right, so that's posterior glides. Um, you can do the supine, I think there's a video or not, it might be, um, I do them sometimes with the person's legs sitting up over the edge of the table, okay? Um, so the legs hand in at 90 degrees of flexion, and then I can start to do a posterior glide there. Anterior glides. Um, the only video I think we have, and really the only way that it's best done, is in the prone position. We talked about you guys not trying always not to lift or pull, because that creates mo a lot more um, problem for you as a therapist. So for at the knee, I mean, I can do an anterior glide here, but I have to physically be pulling the whole leg up towards me, that's a lot more effort on my part, right? You always want to go with gravity whenever possible. So the best way to do that is in the prone position. If you can lay on your stomach and come to the end of the table. If you haven't watched the videos yet, which I hope you have, um, you've probably already seen this. Um, are there no videos on the interventions up yet? No. We didn't do them. Or were they all just posted at the same time? No, we just, we just did examination videos. Oh, really? I could have sworn I did videos on these guys. Okay, good. Well, now I'm really glad I'm, I'm reviewing some of these. We have interventions for next semester, but not this semester. Always a good idea to go with gravity. Now, one of the complicated factors of this, the patient needs to be able to tolerate the prone position, which sometimes they can't. And then you have other, you know, things you have to deal with. 
Um, you want the person at the, end, at the end of the table. You don't want their kneecap compressing against the treatment, you know, against the treatment table either. But you want the joint line, which is the tibia, to be as close to the table line as possible because the table is actually my stabilization force of the femur, okay? If I'm working extension, which is what anterior glide is, hopefully they're not missing 70 degrees of, of, of extension. Hopefully they're only missing the last few degrees or such. So even if it's 10, 20 degrees, you know, the, the, the leg's going to be up here. Again, I have to be cognizantly aware of what my joint plane is because as it's changing, my direction of force is going to change. So I can just, you know, palpate through the soft tissues, get down onto the tibia, and then just impart uh, anterior glide force. And I can do whatever grade of movement. If I'm laying the person on their stomach, I'm probably doing grade threes because that's why I need that force. If I'm just doing oscillatory techniques, I'm not going to get the person on their stomach for that. That's, that's not a lot of force and not a lot of effort. But if I'm trying to deform collagen and get that extra bit of extension, then yes, I'm going to have them in, in prone doing it this way. Okay? Um, the last one that you can always do, we talked about anterior glides, posterior glides, but what can also be done at joints that, that improves every motion all at the same time? Distraction. Distractions, right? So tibial femoral distractions. Um, there's a few, few positions, but the prone position is a really good one. Um, when I do it, I just stabilize um, the femur with my opposite hand. My mobilizing hand is going to be around the malleoli, okay? The direction of force is going to always be 90 degrees to the treatment plane. So if, if she's fully, well, she wouldn't be fully extended because that's a closed back position, right? But if she's even slightly flexed, now my force line needs to be much further out this way. But as she's coming up, then my angle changes. But it's always going to, for the knee, it's always going to be in the line of the tibia. So that's, that's the easiest one to, to find. And so I can just stabilize her, <coughs> take it to end range, into the plastic range, and hold for a length of time, okay? Those are always there. You could use a stabilization belt to stabilize the femur, but if you're already in this position, I don't see any reason why you couldn't just use your hands and then do that that way. Okay? So that's patellofemoral joint, tibial femoral joint. Um, wedges really don't get used much at the knee. Um, the only other joints, the component motions, are your medial and lateral glides at the knee. There's no videos on medial lateral knee glides or anything like that? Dang. It was weeks ago, so don't expect me to weeks. <laughs> um, can I be late? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Remember that on the name. I hate using wedges for this technique because they're too thick. Andy didn't download any prevention videos. He's with your response. Nick will be staying way, we're all staying late tonight and making videos, Don. That's what we're doing. Um, as an intervention technique, when you're lacking those last couple of degrees of extension and or flexion <coughs> one way or the other, and I'm talking about the last few, two, maybe three degrees, you may want to think about maybe there's a component motion loss, okay, and so the component motions at the knee that we can, we can do mobilizations on our medial and lateral glides as well. It's a component motion because we don't have, we can't voluntarily cause our TV to laterally or medially um, deviate, but we can do mobilizations. So for a lateral glide, um, the person would just lie on, lie in the sideline position, and basically um, pad right over the joint line, which is the tibia. So probably needs to be fixated a little bit, and then and then from this position, I can the the table and the towel is stabilizing the femur. I can just provide a lateral glide to her tibia in that sense, okay, and again, grades of movement, just like we've done before. And then the opposite way, you basically what you're just doing is you're just doing a, um, you just move the towel to the other side, so now I want to try to create a medial glide of the tibia. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to push the femur laterally, creating a relative medial glide of the tibia is how you'd want to do that one. So again, the towel is going to be right on the joint line itself as best as it can be. Um, and then from there, the person can just be pushed into the, what's theoretically the medial glide of the tibia, okay? So that's another one that you can do, all right? So those are the mobilizations. That is not an all-inclusive list. Like I said, there are positions, a lot of times I have the person just simply sitting up with their legs dangling. You can perform anterior glides, posterior glides, distractions from those positions. So by all means, feel free to start. Um, experimenting with that and not a Brian and I will be around 
besides the mobilizations, also take this time to work on different exercise ideas for quadriceps and hamstring turner um, as well, okay? Okay, so mobilizations, not just the form in college in grade, count one, grade three, but also practice the, the oscillatory techniques as well, okay?